First things first, there is a big pickup truck that is parked outside the window of my apartment. It is on, it is in neutral, and so I cannot get rid of the vroom vroom background noise that is going to be persisting throughout the quality of this video. If you can hear it, then I apologize. If you can't hear it, then hey, you don't really care about what I'm talking about here. But the Vancouver Canucks have just lost to the Pittsburgh Penguins 4-3 in overtime, and honestly, I can't even really get all too mad about that. The Vancouver Canucks, I feel, were the reason they lost this game. They took way too many penalties, they were a bit too careless, and ultimately, the puck just didn't really bounce their way, especially towards the ending parts in the third and in overtime. Aside from that, you can say that many players actually stepped up to the plate and performed to their standard. Thatcher Demko was an absolute beast in this game. He was exquisite in overtime despite getting beat by Eric Carlson to seal the deal on the game. Archdeep Baines, he's been a good story. He fumbled on the pass a little bit a few times when trying to take a one-timer, but for the most part, I thought he played a pretty solid game. Elias Pettersson could have had more assists in this one. I know for all the flack that we talk about in regards to Pettersson and the contract, he still had himself a pretty good game. And then you had one JT Miller. My goodness, when was the last time you saw the Canucks fans in Rogers Arena chant out a player's name repeatedly, over and over, like they were doing to JT Miller? They chanted his name because this guy scored a goal and an assist, he was a puck-turning over machine, and he killed penalties like crazy in this one. Man oh man, was JT Miller such a beast. The only real caveats I'd say, I'd say that Connor Garland didn't have the best game in particular, especially towards the end there in overtime. I'd say that Quinn Hughes, while he did have some good moments like he always does, man oh man, Quinn, what's going on? Two shots on goal and that's it? No blocks, no hits, no goals, no assists, no nothing. I... I'm on the verge of literally dropping Hughes in fantasy, not because he's not a good player, but because there are other guys that are doing more that are also available. Plus, I'm kind of forced to drop somebody now because Yoni Hockenpah is back from injury. That guy got two blocks and three hits today for Dallas. Such a great stat line and one that's unfortunately a lot more valuable than what Quinn Hughes provided. So, yeah, I'm going to have to make that decision tonight. Yahoo won't let me keep them both on my team because Hockenpah is no longer IR eligible. Either way, we have ourselves a star-studded game to recap, as of course the Canucks played off against Pittsburgh and ended up losing, as I said, mostly due to their own hand. This trend started out really early in the game, as he had Philip Pronick just two minutes in go off for holding. The Canucks are forced onto the PK, they kill it off, which is good, but of course you don't want to be down so much this early. Speaking about those special teams, though, just a few minutes later, you had yourselves Chris Letang going off for delay of game. He threw the puck over the glass. And this was the first moment where we started to see these brand new weird power plays that the Canucks ended up making earlier in the week. You had this unit of Pedersen Hughes, Hoglander Baines, and Elias Lindholm. And honestly, the units kind of sucked at the beginning. Like, the chemistry just was not really there. You could see that some of these guys were choosing who it was they wanted to pass to over others. It just really wasn't working. The second unit had Philip Pronick, JT Miller, Brock Besser, Connor Garland, and somebody else. Was it Tyler Myers? I don't remember. But either way, there was a lot of adjusting needed to be done for this first power play opportunity. But no matter, though, because a minute after that power play ends up expiring, it's Niels Hoglander who scores off of a flurry of chances. Myers starts the entire sequence with a long shot out wide. Hoglander on the rebound gets his shot saved. The rebound goes back to Myers. Another shot, another rebound, and Hoglander is there to put it in. one nothing Vancouver. That is yet another even-strength goal for Hoglander. He's been so good this season as a 5-on-5 forward that it's almost like a new fresh of breath air, just the amount of offense he's able to create just at 5v5. Eventually, though, the Canucks go to the power play after an extended 6-on-5 empty net delayed penalty shift. This one was Eric Carlson for slashing, and this is where that second unit ends up scoring. It's Philip Pronick who is manning the top of the umbrella. He goes down to the right corner for JT Miller. Miller kind of teases it a little bit and then sends it over to the hash marks for Besser, who gets that one-timer, and he scores. 2-0 Vancouver at the 
two minute left mark in the first period. And unfortunately, after taking a two nothing lead and starting out the second with a two nothing lead, you probably shouldn't be losing four three. But the Canucks ended up doing that. So yeah, spoiler alert, the shots on goal at this point of the game, 14 to six. So you started to see the Canucks really go into that style that they'd been exhibiting most of the year where they go up early, they go with their flurry of chances, and then they just back off. They let the other team come to them. They just play a little bit more defensively and they try to get some offense still if it's there, but they don't really force it. They're not as eager as they were in the first little bit of the game. There's another penalty. This time it's Jesse Pugliarvi to the box for tripping, and eventually this power play for Vancouver carries over into the start of the second. It ends up getting killed. Arshdeep Baines had a great one-timer shot attempt, but it went off the side of the net. And then just a few minutes later, you have yourselves the Penguins scoring to bring it within one. It's Teddy Bluger with a terrible giveaway in the Canuck zone, and it finds itself onto the stick of Ricard Raquel, who ends up dangling around both Myers and Thatcher Demko to bring the lead back down to one. Following this, you had yourselves a few great chances by the Canucks. Sam Lafferty got robbed by Jari off of a beautiful one-timer right in the slot, with Ian Cole and Phil DiGiuseppe, of all people, moving the puck around. Just a few minutes later after that, you had Elias Pettersson that was robbed by Jari in front off of a wraparound attempt and a follow-up chance. And eventually, what I'm saying with the Canucks shooting themselves in the foot in this game comes to fruition in the middle of the second period because at 11.16 left, you had Nikita Zadorov go off for tripping, and then three seconds later, whilst shorthanded, it's Tyler Myers who goes off for high sticking. It's a five on three for almost two full gosh darn minutes. And eventually, it's Malkin the Crosby, backdoor cross crease pass over to Raquel. The Penguins tie it. It's 2-2. Five on four is remaining for one minute and 11 seconds, but this is when the MVP chants start to come in. Because after Ricard Raquel made a 2-2 and the Canucks still had a minute left to kill off of the penalty, you had JT Miller forcing a shorthanded breakaway by stripping the puck off of Chris Letang. He double taps the puck once to chip it up and then once to push it forward around Letang. Comes right in on Jari and with a long shot ends up potting in that short gives the Canucks the 3-2 lead, his second point of the night, and look, he's doing such a good job in this game at doing his overall duty. JT Miller was all over the puck tonight in terms of his clearing, his physicality, his shooting, his passing. He was crazy good. This may have been the best game we've seen out of JT Miller in a long time. And towards the end of the second, there was some really good work being put in by Miller and Myers. Great chances and saves by Jari in that stint. A few seconds later, though, Evgeny Malkin tackles JT Miller, which draws a penalty that bleeds into the start of the third. So there you go. Yet another JT Miller positive play. The Canucks, unfortunately, cannot convert on that power play for Malkin, but the penalty troubles don't stop there. It's Elias Pettersson who goes to the box with 14 minutes to go for high-sticking Pierre-Olivier Joseph. Miller steals the puck in the Penguin zone and set up Mikheyev, and the fans at this point in the game started chanting JT Miller's name. The power play gets killed off, but despite that, you had Lars Eller who ends up tying the game. The Canucks got hemmed into their zone after Juleson had a painful shot block. There was chaos in front of the Canucks net. Multiple players lost their stick, which eventually led to Lars Eller taking the puck, walking right in and tying the game 3-3. Seven minutes ago, though, you have yourselves yet another power play for Pittsburgh. It's Brock Besser who got a hooking penalty. Bad call to take at this point in the game. And it's JT Miller again who keeps on clearing it. Eventually, it gets killed off, and the overtime ensues where it is Eric Carlson who ends up taking the puck on a rebound, like the third rebound in that sequence, and ends up putting it into the open net. Ilias Pedersen, Besser, and Hughes, they each had their own chances robbed by Jari, but this is kind of where the downfall began because at this point in the game, you had Elias Pedersen chasing the play and chasing the puck, which ended up resulting in a 2-on-1 rush the other way. Had Pedersen just stayed back, it would have been a 2-on-2, but nah, he got a little bit greedy. He gave up his check to get that 2-on-1 opportunity going, and it bit him in the behind, which dominoed into the Penguins getting multiple shots. Philip Peronik was the last man back, and there was a few rebounds. Thatcher Demko made some good saves, but ultimately Eric Carlson puts the puck in the twine. Pittsburgh wins 4-3, and JT Miller is looking like the most valuable player on this gosh darn team at the end of the night. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below about the Canucks and the Penguins 4-3 overtime thriller. I hope you enjoyed this video. Charles 99 and bye.